No more late night outings for residents of Madrid. The Spanish government's imposed a nationwide nighttime curfew to curb the spread of COVID-19. And it's empowered local authorities to introduce more restrictions. There is no general confinement in this new state of emergency, but the longer we stay at home and the less contacts we have, the more we will be protected and the more we will protect our loved ones and also the health of the country as a whole. Some say the measures are too little, too late. We should have taken these steps a long time ago or done more to restrict the number of people taking public transport or going to work. A record surge in new infections is also forcing Italy to introduce the most severe restrictions since the end of its first lockdown in May. It's closing all gyms, swimming pools and cinemas. Bars and restaurants will have to shut their doors by 6 in the evening and people can't gather in groups of more than four. That sparked protests from affected businesses, which say they won't survive another lockdown. The new restrictions make people believe that they get sick in restaurants. Without our clients, whom we can't feed anymore, how can we survive? Swimming pools can't be abandoned. They have to be maintained. But we have zero profits. Despite the rising antagonism, the Italian government seems to be out of options. Cases are also surging in France, Poland and many other European countries which have also responded by reimposing restrictions. And without a vaccine expected anytime soon, Europeans will have to brace for more economic pain in the coming months. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Bharat Pankhanya joins us now from Bath in the UK. He's a senior clinical lecturer at the University of Exeter. Welcome back to the program, Bharat. Now, we are seeing this worrying surge in cases in places like Italy, France and Spain. In Italy's case, it's been barely six months since uh, that country, which was the world's former epicentre for the coronavirus, lifted a nationwide lockdown. Why? Haven't these countries managed to get a hold of the spread of this virus? What are governments there doing wrong? It is pure and simple biology. And the simple biology is this. Whilst you have got a population that is vulnerable to infection and there is a virus in circulation, you can get people infected. And when we see pictures like what we're seeing right now, where there is a lot of people interacting with each other, it is clear, absolutely clear, that infections will be created and you will create more cases and then those more cases will create more cases. It's what I call blindingly obvious that when human beings react in a vulnerable population, meaning they haven't got any immunity, they will get infected. Now, in the early stages of this pandemic, we saw those horrific scenes around the world, but especially in places like Italy, in which hospitals were overwhelmed, doctors were forced to choose which patients to save and treat. Uh, we saw people in their thousands dying in Italy and other parts of the world. Are you worried that we're going to see similar scenes repeated this time around? Or do you think health systems in Europe and elsewhere are now more advanced and, and better equipped to deal with COVID-19 cases? I hope we will never see those scenes again. And one way to make sure we don't see those scenes again is a partnership between the public and the government. And the government has to get its messages absolutely clear and also support businesses. So what we are seeing is businesses wish to make money to survive. And uh, we say that if you bring in too many customers into your business at any one given time, you will create infections. So what the government has to do is say, you're going to earn less money, but we will support you with your wages. That way you keep case numbers down. But going back to the hospital setting, um, there is no new cure. We've got better ways of keeping you alive, but not significantly better. And But I do hope that now that we know, and we know the vulnerable people, hopefully, they will keep cover, keep a low profile, and hopefully the hospitals will not be full of, again, a large number of elderly, vulnerable people dying. 
And what about the return of things like curfews, the shutting down of businesses and other restrictions that we're seeing in Italy, Spain and parts of France? Do you think these measures are needed? Because we know they've taken a huge toll on the economies, on people, livelihoods and in turn on their mental health as well. Do you advocate for the return of lockdown measures in order to get these infection rates lower? The the lockdown measures is only a temporary measure, and we need to look at it as a temporary measure so that the healthcare systems are not overwhelmed. The long-term measure is education. So what we do is we educate people about how the virus behaves, and then we instruct people on how to take personal individual responsibility not to get infected and not to infect others. And if we take that strategy of, look, we're going to sort out public health, and as a result of sorting out public health, we also sort out the economy at the same time. I think that is a way forward. I look at lockdowns as almost a, a failure and that we cannot carry on failing like this. A better way is to say to the public, we're going to educate you. You have to take personal responsibility and you will strictly, very strictly, do all those infection control measures like wear your mask properly, don't mingle in large groups, don't mingle in too many other groups. And that way, it is possible to keep case numbers down and keep them down. But there has been a glimmer of good news today. AstraZeneca says its potential COVID-19 vaccine has produced a similar immune response in older and younger adults. What does that mean exactly? Does it mean that we are a step closer to an effective vaccine that perhaps could be rolled out before the end of the year? So the good news there, which is something that I have been concerned about, is that the vaccine must be tested in the vulnerable groups that you wish to protect. So it's pointless testing it in a younger age group and hoping that the older people will also be protected. You've got to test it in the older group because they don't often make good immune responses. So if the answers are that we have tested it in the older age group, and they're making good immune response, then that is a good news in that we can feel confident that once we start immunizing the people, that they will make good immunity and therefore be protected. The uncertainty is we don't know how long they will remain protected for. That only time will tell us. Okay, very interesting. Let's hope for more good developments in this vaccine and others. Bharat Pankhanya in Bath, thank you thank again you. for joining us on the program.